Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, General Physician. All my video lectures are for educative purpose. This lecture will be very useful to you in your theory exam, also in your oral exam, as well as when you go for your private practice. Today we are going to discuss on hemoptysis. You know very well it is presence of blood in sputum. As routine we will be discussing under all these headings. So expectoration of blood from respiratory tract or it is a presence of blood in sputum. We call that as hemoptysis. Also, you can define as coughing of blood originating below the vocal cord. Or also, it can be described as expectoration of blood anywhere from the respiratory tract, that is from glottis to alveolus. Hemo means blood, tesis means spitting. So, spitting of blood is called hemoptysis. Now, this particular can range from a small sprig or sometimes even we call microscopic, very difficult to identify, to a gross blood loss in sputum. So, it can range from a very small quantity to a large quantity we call massive hemoptysis. So, depending upon the quantity, it has been defined. So, there is one word which is called life-threatening hemoptysis or a massive hemoptysis. It is described as coughing of blood more than 150 ml at one time. So, if he gets a massive bout and if it is containing more than 150, it should be considered as a lethal or a massive. Or in 24 hours, total quantity more than 400 ml. Only 5% of hemoptysis are massive, but mortality in that group is almost 80% because if you don't diagnose them early, you don't treat them, the mortality rate is very, very high. So, massive hemoptysis is also described as right from 200 ml to 1 liter in 24 hours. But by and large, we always use the word more than 400 ml in 24 hours. Because by the time if a person is losing 1 liter, he will not survive. The chances of survival will be very, very poor. Also, sometimes you can say that person has got a massive hemoptysis if we are not sure what is the quantity. But now, there is a respiratory compromise with or without Hemodynamically instability means person has developed severe hypotension, tachycardia, peripheral shock or we call hemorrhagic shock. It is an emergency and person must have a massive hemoptysis. The mortality rate in non-massive group is 7 to 30 percent. But in a massive group, it is right up to 80% or even we can say more. There is one another group where he doesn't have any bleeding, but he mimics and that we call as a factitious hemoptysis. There is another word which is utilized for a massive is called exquenting, ex, exsanguating hemoptysis which they describe more than 150 ml per hour. So, you can divide into mild, moderate and severe. Mild is usually described as 100 ml in 24 hours. Between 100 to ideally this should be 400 ml. Some people utilize this will give you another group. So, this is one group which is telling 100 to 600 ml and more than 600 ml in 24 hour or 30 ml per hour should be considered as massive. 
already we have given this definition life threatening 150 ml and more than 400 ml now some people describe that massive as a more than 600 ml so by and large majority of the group uh, consider this as 100 ml as mild between 100 to 150 and 100 ml moderate severe is considered between 150 to 200 ml and massive is considered as more than 400 ml in 24 hours or in a single episode more than 150 ml depending upon what you are following you should be able to differentiate bleeding from gums from epistaxis hematemesis and hemoptysis hemoptysis is a bleeding from respiratory passage bleeding from gums is from the gums and dental etiology hematemesis is a vomiting of blood or presence of blood in vomitus and epistaxis is a bleeding from nasal cavity so to differentiate between those two usually we use this is very frequently asked in the short note very commonly asked in your oral and you will be also facing across in your everyday practice so in hemoptysis no gi symptoms no respiratory etiology blood will be bright red in color consistency will be usually liquid or clotted clotted will be little old blood liquid will be fresh blood and usually ph will be alkaline while in hematemesis it will be along with nausea vomiting it will be containing gastric content and that is we it will be containing food particles and etiology will be stomach or liver pathophysiology like portal hypertension blood will be usually dark red in color or brown in color or black in color it will be coffee ground in consistency liquid and ph will be acidic so investigation required in hemoptysis will be chest x ray or hrct or ct ct scan while in case of hematemesis nasogastric lavage and upper gi endoscopy this is a difference which is being full difference we have mentioned in hemoptysis it will be cough and very frequently it will be frothy because of air particles while in hematemesis it will be along with vomitus and there will be no froth hemoptysis will be preceded by cough dyspnea asphyxia etc while hematemesis will be with nausea vomiting pain in abdomen pain in epigastrium or person will have symptom signs of what we call is a portal hypertension in the form of ascites caput medusa etc hemoptysis will be bright red in color while this will be dark red or coffee brown in color the ph will be alkaline ph will be acidic here there will be history of coughing here the person will have a history of gastric or what we call is the upper gi tract like gerd gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer or gastric carcinoma esophageal carcinoma etc or liver disease in the form of portal hypertension jaundice etc this will be blood tinge sputum will be quite common while here the person will have another symptoms which will be after hematemesis that is black tarry stool we call malina it is mixed with sputum it is mixed with food anemia is quite common and variable in hemoptysis depending upon the severity and duration while blood loss is quite common and anemia is a very very common finding in case of a hematemesis because there can be a chronic blood loss macrophages will contain hemosiderin in case of a hemoptysis while usually in hematemesis there will be no macrophages and there will be no hemosiderin in case of hemoptysis there will be spurting and may be associated with chest pain while usually in case of hematemesis there will be no spurting and it will be associated with 
abdominal pain, particularly in an epigastrium and retrosternal region. Pseudohemoptysis, or we call the false or spurious, or we call factitious. That is, blood is not from the lower respiratory tract, it comes from above the vocal cord. Maybe epistaxis, or maybe from gums. And this, when he vomits, we call it a hematemesis. So, mouth, pharynx, nose, nasal cavity, aspiration of hematemesis, colonization of gram negative bacteria, rifampicin can produce a red color secretions and even during ventilation and factitious hemoptysis are also called as a Munchausen sign. So that false will be above the vocal cord, does not persist, does not mix with sputum, it is from ENT examination, you will be able to find out from where it is and chest x-ray will be absolutely normal. Once in a while, it can be asked in your oral. It is also called as a false, spurious or factitious. As far as etiology of hemoptysis is concerned, you can divide depending upon the site that is tracheobronchial, cardiovascular. These are the two most common. Among tracheobronchial, acute bronchitis, chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, foreign body, bronchogenic carcinoma or laryngeal carcinoma or telangiectasia. As far as cardiovascular condition is concerned, left ventricular failure or we call acute pulmonary edema, mitral stenosis, aortic aneurysm because of compression of trachea. These are some of the common causes which we have mentioned here. As far as airway is concerned, acute bronchitis, chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, lung abscess, secondary metastasis and foreign body. This comes topmost on the list. This red marks, cups topmost on the list. As far as pulmonary condition is concerned, in India first comes tuberculosis, then pneumonia, lung abscess, aspergillosis, necrotizing aspergillosis and we call lung fluke or we call parasitic infection which is paragonium westermanni. Vascular etiology particularly pulmonary embolism we call is a pulmonary infarct which can be right from microembolization to a massive and in case of a pulmonary AV malformation. Miscellaneous group will be in case of a periartritis nodosa, granulomatous lesions, then along with good pasture syndrome which is an autoimmune group of disorders and because of a bleeding disorders. Also, once in a while you can come across if there is a secondary metastasis from endometriosis into lung, we call it a pulmonary endometriosis and which is also given a name, catamanial hemoptysis. By and large, these are the most common causes for massive hemoptysis, that is bronchitis, bronchiectasis, lung abscess, uh, bronchogenic carcinoma, secondary metastasis tuberculosis and occasionally in case of a lung parasitic infection called lung fluke. You can divide into tumor, infection, vascular, vasculitis, trauma, cardiac, hematological, benign, AV malformation, good pasture syndrome, iantrogenic, acute left ventricular failure, person who is on anticoagulants, etc. These are the big list. In your theory, you can utilize this, but in oral exam, gives the mo most common causes like tuberculosis, bronchiectasis, lung abscess, bronchogenic carcinoma, secondary metastasis. Give those first, pulmonary embolism. And as far as cardiovascular condition is concerned, acute left ventricular failure, mitral stenosis, those groups should be topmost on the list. And then, you can give other causes depending upon the question and answers. This is another way you can divide. These are all the pathophysiological or we call 
conditions like diffuse alveolar hemorrhage then acute chronic bronchitis bronchiectasis cystic fibrosis pneumonia then aneurysm then liver fluke are sorry lung fluke tumors pulmonary embolism pulmonary hypertension etc so you can divide this way also this is pulmonary groups this is bleeding disorders this is an another pulmonary group vascular neoplastic these are all pulmonary but you divide into lung parenchyma vascular group neoplastic group infections miscellaneous group vasculitis coagulopathic disorders traumatic injury at your leisure time you can go through all these groups and depending upon the marks etc you can mention some of the commonest etiology first and then mention the rare conditions in oral also always mention the most common this is iatrogenic systemic groups drug toxins which will produce false interpretation of hemoptysis and hematological or what we call as blood groups these are another which will give a massive hemoptysis that is a big list can give massive but remember in massive the most common will be acute bronchitis chronic bronchitis bronchiectasis lung abscess massive pulmonary embolism those will come topmost on the list bronchogenic carcinoma and secondary metastasis as far as pathophysiology is concerned we know the source is always from because lung is having two circulation bronchial and pulmonary circulation so it can be from any one of those groups and mechanism can be because of compression vessel engorgement or erosion of the vessel or rupture of the vessel aneurysm formations mucosal ulceration granulomatous tissue producing a damage to or what we call as a vascular granulomatous tissue or direct invasion into pulmonary artery all this mechanism vasculitis pulmonary embolism inflammation bronchiolithiasis many many groups 90% of the time it is from bronchial artery only in 10% of the time it is from pulmonary artery groups or you can divide pathophysiologically from airway that is from tracheobronchial tree up to alveoli that is parenchyma airway is tracheobronchial tree parenchyma is alveoli and perialveolar tissue while vascular is pulmonary artery capillary network and bronchial artery also you should include pulmonary hypertension pulmonary venous hypertension this is a diagram showing you the circulation if you are interested you can go through at leisure time by and large we have already told you the cuff reflex will be inspiration followed by expiration across the glottis glottis then glottis will open up glottis will open up and there will be forceful expulsion whenever you want to approach for hemoptysis history is absolutely must followed by a good respiratory examination and as far as investigation is concerned bronchoscopy x ray chest hrct ct or mri or pulmonary angiography combined with ct or we call ct pulmonary angiography and in some condition you might require a lab parameter particularly in case of a hematological disorders you will require a full study for coagulative disorders as far as clinical features is concerned you will have to differentiate from history examination and clinical examination whether it is hemoptysis hematemesis or epistaxis or we call as a factitious group and symptoms will depend upon the site from where the bleeding is there 
on set and quantity right from a microscopic to a massive hemoptysis usually in a massive hemoptysis along with hemoptysis you will have symptom signs of hemorrhagic shock and occasionally person can get asphyxiated because of a blood clot blocking the bronchopulmonary tree or tracheobronchial tree because of occlusion person can have apnea in a shock stage so first thing is always make sure that it is a true hemoptysis find out the severity of hemoptysis have a good history have a good examination try to identify the etiology clinically and then you can go for investigation like x ray chest and if required ct or mri or hrct along with angiography and then you can proceed with the treatment part of it in laboratory investigation cbc platelet count blood urea creatinine urine analysis then to find out the cardiovascular groups coagulative studies that is we call study for coagulative factors defects as far as cardiovascular condition is concerned bnp and terminal pro bnp echocardiography very very helpful sputum examination will be helpful it will confirm the presence of rbc you can look for afb bacteria fungus etc you can also have a cytological study to rule out malignancy chest x ray hrct chest ct ct pulmonary angio bronchoscopy and biopsy will be for respiratory conditions chest x ray will also help to identify the cardiovascular groups so depending upon that you will go for investigation in history confirm whether it is hemoptysis hematemesis or epistaxis we have already discussed before usually you will have a scanty or we call as trace in case of consolidation occasionally in case of bronchitis and bronchiectasis but by and large in you know, a acute bronchitis and bronchiectasis or lung abscess you can have a massive also in case of a malignancy pulmonary infarct because of massive pulmonary embolism tuberculosis and bleeding disorders can have a massive if it is a bright red in color it is a fresh bleeding if it is a dark black in color it is a old bleeding if it is a frothy blood stained frothy sputum classical in case of a lvf if it is encovy sauce it will be in case of amebiasis if it is red currant jelly type if it will be very common in klebsiella infection and if it is a rusty sputum or a small streak of blood it is very common in consolidation associated symptoms like fever in case of tuberculosis and pneumonia weight loss will be classical in case of tuberculosis malignancy secondary metastasis and in case of hiv infections chest pain will be very classical in case of a pulmonary embolism dyspnea will be more common with copd chronic bronchitis bronchiectasis lung abscess uh, bronchogenic carcinoma pulmonary embolism those groups central cyanosis with orthopnea will be more commonly in case of a left ventricular failure or we call acute pulmonoedema acute onset pulmonary embolism traumatic etiology bleeding disorders infections etc will be more common long standing etiology will be more common with chronic lung disease like bro chronic bronchitis bronchiectasis tuberculosis lung abscess recurrent will be more common in tuberculosis chronic lung disease all this chronic lung disease as well as malignancy quite common so history is very important a proper physical examination followed by investigations an investigation can be complete blood count platelet count coagulative studies renal function test urine analysis 
then to rule out autoimmune antibody studies particularly good pasture syndromes you can rule out by even having a renal parameters renal studies and sputum culture for ap etc all those can be done this is one very good slide which will give you a little idea history suggest you of an acute bronchitis usually mild single episode self limited no systemic symptoms non smoker close observation if still bleeds you can go for chest ct chest x ray if it is normal go for these investigations if there is a chance of a possible infections and also there is a history and on examination you suspect infection then you go for a additional workup what is additional workup if there is a fever hemoptysis consider bacterial pneumonia and if it is subacute or chronic there is a weight loss there is a immunosuppression there is a cavitary lesion or there is a nodular lesion consider tuberculosis or fungal pneumonia and if you have got a chest city you can rule out malignancy if it is normal you don't suspect malignancy almost it is ruled out and if there is any other finding accordingly you can go for further investigations so this is a roughly a short chart which gives you a idea how you proceed these are all the diagnostic investigations which are there and these are the findings in which conditions at your leisure time you can go through maybe ask in your oral this is chest x ray finding what you get in a radiological findings and what it is suggest you of again you can go through at your leisure time this is you can see that there is a little opacity with cavitary lesion you can see here there is a clear cut horizontal line this is lung abscess this is cavity this will be air bronchogram is seen more in favor of consolidation you can see a nodular lesion more in favor of either primary or secondary metastasis you can see multiple small round shadows more in favor of secondary metastasis this is very nice consolidation with you can see the trachea to the side so this is consolidation with collapse or it can be atelectasis because usually in a consolidation you will not get a trachea shift so it will be collapse this is a sign typical sign in a case of a pulmonary embolism we call westmark sign and hampton's hump you can see a very nice round shadow here maybe a bronchogenic carcinoma or secondary metastasis and you can see a this are round shadow in the hilum these are hilar nodes this is a massive pleural effusion sorry in pleural effusion you will have a shift of mediastinum to the opposite side you can see trachea is to the same side so this is a collapse of the lung and the, one of the most common cause of collapse of the lung will be because of malignancy which is producing compression on the trachea or main bronchus you can take the advantage of a ct scan and find out the pulmonary nodules cavitary lesions you can take the advantage of a bronchoscopy and that will help you to rule out a foreign body treatment rule out the conditions you can identify the site of bleeding you can do the foreign body aspiration and also you can take the biopsy and you can do a therapeutic treatment for arresting the bleeding you can also perform suction and lavage to prevent aspiration and blockage of the tracheobronchial tree 
and you preserve the ventilation of a non bleeding lung that is very very important fiber optic bronchoscope is a very good advantage because you can see the smallest tracheobronchial tree rigid bronchoscope has little got a disadvantage because you will require a ga and expert should be available angiography with ct will be very helpful to identify the site and severity in case of a pulmonary embolism and then you can go for endovascular treatment in a case of a pulmonary embolism vq scan will be very helpful in case of a pulmonary embolism ebus is called endoscopic endobronchial ultrasound which will be helping you to identify the lung pathology and also it will be helping you to take biopsy from the site where you are suspecting malignancy as far as differential diagnosis is concerned you will have to differentiate from epistaxis hematemesis and bleeding from the oral cavity that is from gums as far as management is concerned most important part is localization of bleeding site you will have to cup, suppress the cup consider empiric antibiotic if you are suspecting infective pathophysiology you must investigate to find out the accurate diagnosis and if there is a bleeding more than 150 ml person should be hospitalized you should protect non bleeding lung locate the site of bleeding and control by control the bleeding from airway lumen from blood vessels and by resecting both airway as well as blood vessels this will be surgical intervention so establish the diagnosis and for establishing you can use the endotracheal intubation mechanical ventilation can be utilized to maintain the patent airway once you establish the diagnosis isolate the blood or bleeding from which lung stop the bleeding by placing dual lumen endotracheal tubes or airway blocking in a bleeding lung if there is a massive embolism if there is a massive bleeding you can go for angiographic embolization or you can go for endobronchial treatment like cautery or laser therapy and if in spite of all this other treatment still it is not controlled you will have to go for surgical resection in all this group the mortality rate is very very high so if there is a non massive hemoptysis usually identify the cause and treat the basic cause and in case of a massive medical treatment if not control go for surgical and in surgical you can go for endobronchial endovascular and surgical resection so identify the site proper position see that the airway is patent oxygenation is proper if person has gone into the shock stage try to correct the shock stage then you can go for control of bleeding so prevention of asphyxia stop bleeding and treat the primary cause as far as airway is concerned oxygenation should be proper positioning should be good cuff control and endobronchial intubation for control of bleeding as well as for ventilation so management will include resuscitation identify bleeding site position airway patency and control of bleeding so protection of a non bleeding lung should be done proper position and bleeding site should be down this is one of the procedure for mild moderate and massive hemoptysis what we have already given how you approach to a person so if there is no risk factor treat the underlying cause if there are risk factors and there is a chance of recurrent bleeding or person is having recurrent bleeding 
you must investigate by ct scan bronchoscopy and then treat the underlying condition if there is a moderate bleeding go for x ray chest cbc all laboratory parameters ct scan bronchoscopy identify the cause treat the underlying condition and try to find out the basic etiology and treat the basic etiology in massive secure the airway bleeding should stop if there is a continuous bleeding you can go for endovascular treatment that is embolization or resection this is another algorithm you can go at your leisure time for massive and non massive massive group and non massive group we have already shown you slides this is another for non massive in detail this is again history mild moderate and massive at your leisure time go through this is for massive this is again another type of a flow chart what investigation you go for and what you depending upon the investigation what treatment you go for at your leisure time you can go through you can have a pause all these algorithms you can have a pause and you can go through your at leisure time again this is for massive so management can be bronchoscopic management like bronchial irrigation vasoconstrictor agent topical coagulant laser therapy cold saline lavage etc endobronchial blockage can be done by balloon tamponade unilateral lung ventilation double lumen endotracheal tubes or you can go for embolotherapy and last is surgery that is called surgical resection this is a these are the different instrument for endobronchial electrocautery you can go for electrocautery which is a thermal destruction balloon tamponade you can go for you can go with a airway blockade by silicon spigot and then you can go for surgical resection like lobectomy pneumonectomy segmentotomy wedge resection etc depending on which portion of lung you are removing complication wise one of the most notorious blood clot can get stuck into tracheobronchial tree severe asphyxia and person can die because of apnea respiratory failure hemorrhagic shock chronic blood loss anemia good number of time because of hemorrhagic shock not treated early renal failure aki because of blockage of a tracheobronchial tree collapse chances of infections are very high and last but not the least is high mortality that is death during treatment part person can go into complication like paraplegia chest pain dysphagia main stem bronchial bronchus infarct bronchial stenosis splenic and other systemic infarct bronchoesophageal fistula paradoxical embolization that is migration of a coil pulmonary hypertension etc there are lot of things this is called bronchial artery embolization you can get all this complication bronchial artery embolization this is endovascular procedure so i end my lecture here i hope this lecture will be helpful no doubt this is only five mark short note in your oral ex or a theory exam usually ask as hemoptysis as a short note or difference between hemoptysis and hematemesis as a short note very frequently ask in oral but in your everyday practice you will come across hence i have taken in little more detail go through here at your leisure time i feel this will be very helpful and if you feel that this is a good lecture you can press button like subscribe you can share with your friends at the end of this lecture i thank you all for taking out time 
I know that your time is very, very valuable and I appreciate that you have spent some of the time with me. See you in next lecture.